Thank you very much for waiting. Now we'd like to open the Jaika Clean City Initiative, JCCI International Seminar 2023. I would like to act as a moderator today. My name is Watarai from the Secretariat Office. Thank you very much for this opportunity today. First of all, on behalf of the organizer, I would like to invite Mr. Yamada Junichi, Executive Senior Vice President from JICA, to deliver the opening remarks. So with that, Mr. Yamada, please. Uh, good morning, distinguished participant. My name is Yamada. I am an Executive Senior Vice President of JICA. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to extend my greetings. The distinguished participants and online viewers, thank you so much for joining us today for the JICA Clean City Initiative International Seminar. I would like to welcome you all. JICA is focusing on environmental management, such as waste management, water, and air pollution control. When people from overseas come to Japan, they're often surprised to find that there is no litter in the street and abundance of clean water in Japan. And even in urban areas, exhausted emissions are less of a problem. These are achieved by leveraging our experience in sophisticated technology and knowledge. JICA is transferring such Japanese technology and knowledge to developing countries, helping to create clean cities where people can live healthy and safe lives. JICA support was announced at the first international seminar last year under the title of JICA Clean City Initiative, JCCI. The JICA Clean City Initiative, JCCI, has been steadily implemented since then. In la June last year, Japanese government growth strategy for fiscal year 2022 the grand design and action plan for new capitalism have been articulated in specific measures, such as follow-up document. And one of the ex ex this, this, uh, support that we are offering in is stipulated as JICA Clean City Initiative. And in terms of pursuing for coexistence with nature and achieving circular economy, pursuing JCCI in developing countries are important from the perspective of international strategy. Now, today, we have the honor of having Mr. Matsuzawa, a Director General of the Global Environment Bureau of the Ministry of Environment, and he has been posted to Vietnam as JICA expert and advised the Ministry of Environment on environmental management policies. And since his return to Japan, he has continued to contribute to the African Clean Cities Platform, so-called ACCP, a great amount of effort has been extended. And this platform was established in 2017. At then, only 24 countries and 23 member cities. Now we have expanded to 157 cities in 43 countries. In some of the knowledge and uh, the, of Yokohama city, uh, the local government, we are trying to apply that for the sake of Africa for this urban development, because Japan itself has faced and overcome the problem of environmental pollution in the past. This experience is not limited to success, but there are a lot of setbacks. And today's seminar will also showcase some of the result of ACCP. JICA will continue to build on JCCI's cooperative achievement and, and expand on them as a means of cooperation, technical cooperation, loan assistance, grant aid, and other ODA programs will be fully implemented. We'll also further collaborate with re related ministries, organization, local government, private companies, university, NGO, and volunteers in order to further seek for a strong tie and collaboration. And through these efforts, we aim to deliver clean cities to 500 million residents in 50 countries by 2030. JICA already have been pursuing nine technical cooperation projects and seven environmental management expert dispatchment and provided grant assistance in three projects. And Indonesia, Vietnam, India, Bangladesh, Brazil, and Dominican Republic and other countries were also in the process of establishing yen loan project. The number of beneficiaries has expanded to about 320 million people in 31 countries 
today. And today's seminar, there are two halls for further deepening our discussion. At this blue hall, the Japanese government, developing country government, an international organization and invited to review the experience of Japanese cooperation in providing national and multilateral assistance from institutional and policy development and perspective in order to establish circular economy and net zero society and utilizing digital transformation technology will be the main gist of this discussion. On parallel in Green Hall, we mainly invite Japanese private sector have them introduce some of the technologies related to environmental management and climate changes. Well, both are going to be recorded and made available for viewing after this seminar. So you'll be able to enjoy the discussion that are being held in two halls. Finally, I would like to conclude my remarks by expressing my hope that the seminar will serve as an opportunity to strengthen our partnership through the JICA Clean City Initiative. And with that, I would like to conclude for my opening remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yamada. Now I'd like to call upon Mr. Matsudaka Yutaka, Director General of Global Environment Bureau of the Ministry of the Environment. So, Mr. Matsudawa, please take the floor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am from Global Environment Bureau of the Ministry of the Environment. My name is Matsudawa. I would like to make a few remarks on behalf of the Ministry of the Environment on the occasion of JICA Clean City Initiative International Seminar 2023. First of all, thank you for inviting me. I'd like to talk about the importance of cities. As Mr. Yamada, Executive Senior Vice President said, in terms of the pollution waste management, we are faced with these realistic problems. And recently, we set 1.5 degrees target in the Paris Agreement. It is important to recognize the roles played by cities and this recognition is shared globally. Cities represent about 70% of GHG emissions. By each industrial sector, we have to have effort to decarbonize, but cities can be across dimensional efforts. In the Shalm El Sheikh implementation plan adopted at COP27 in Egypt last November, the importance of the role of cities and the need for local cooperation were confirmed. In Japan, along with international efforts, local government, local businesses, and Financial institutions are taking the lead in creating at least 100 leading decarbonization regions to achieve carbon neutrality by fiscal 2030. The Ministry of the Environment has already selected 46 proposals for leading decarbonization regions. We have different regional characteristics. They may be urban areas, rural areas, but this program creates advanced decarbonization models suitable for different characteristics so that we can provide financial support to ambitious municipalities. On the international front, the MOE has been working on a variety of projects to help solve urban environmental problems and promote decarbonization. In particular, over the past decades, through international city-to-city -city collaboration, we have promoted the global expansion of the decarbonization initiatives. Up to date, the city-to-city -city collaboration has led the climate change cooperation, generating air and waste co-benefit in 45 cities and regions in 13 different countries around the world. 
and 20 municipalities in Japan. In implementing the MOE City to City Collaboration Project, we are always connected with JICA. Connecting with JICA's programs enables more comprehensive response to the needs of partner cities. For example, as a successful example in the collaboration between Yokohama City and Bangkok, the MOE's city to city collaboration project is supporting the implementation of various measures based on the climate change master plan prepared by the JICA technical cooperation project. There will be a speaker from Kita Kyushu City and Toyama City. These municipal local governments are in Iskandar in Malaysia. They are implementing JICA project there. In addition, in Baria Vuntal province, a southern industrial area of Vietnam, JICA's project is currently underway to promote institutional system for eco-friendly industrial parks. Now, the MOE's city-to-city -city collaboration project is trying to help implement this system. As Mr. Yamada said, we're looking at cities in Africa in order to share knowledge and experience of each city. The MOE and JICA launched the African Clean Cities Platform, ACCP, to improve the capacity of human resources and organizations in African countries. Yokohama City has provided training for foreign representatives in Japan under the JICA's project. There will be a presentation by Maputo City from Mozambique. This is exactly the flagship project of ACCP, where Japanese municipalities are participating as partners. Example is Fukuoka City. This ACCP is growing rapidly. They have spread efforts in different African countries with the aim of realizing clean cities and healthy lifestyles in 2030. Training programs in Japan were held in cooperation with Japanese local governments. And the JICA has developed 19 clean city projects in 12 African countries. Furthermore, to develop these efforts, to try to work with JICA further, we both are now launching a new clean city partnership program, C2P2, as a centerpiece of city to city collaboration of the Ministry of the Environment, ACCP, and JCCI. This is the new program, Clean Cities Partnership Program, C2P2. The program will work with local governments, private companies, and financial institutions to address climate change and environmental pollution, circular economy, nature restoration, or nature positive to provide comprehensive and synergetic support for urban challenges. It is also intended to promote collaboration with other major stakeholders, including like-minded countries such as G7 and international financial institutions. We hope the program will lead to the broader development of regional decarbonization and environmental improvement initiatives in cities. In April this year, in Sapporo, G7 Climate, Energy and Environment Ministers meeting will be held. As the G7 presidency, Japan will lead international discussions on the environment and climate change. Specifically, in order to shift the fossil fuel centered economy, society, and industrial structure since the Industrial Revolution to one centered on clean energy and to realize carbon neutrality, circular economy, 
and nature restoration in an integrated manner, we will discuss global promotion of green transformation, GX, which is really the transformation of the entire economic and social system. In addition, in order to promote concrete actions of all sectors and all stakeholders, we will discuss from various perspectives, such as countries, cities, regions, industries, businesses, and lifestyles. We will also discuss how to respond to the current energy crisis, such as soaring energy prices due to the recent uh, international circumstances. Finally, I'd like to conclude my remarks by expressing my hope that today's seminar will serve as an opportunity to further accelerate the transition to cleaner cities and contribute to the resolution of our issues. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, Mr. Matsuzawa. Now then, we would like to enter without ado into the presentations and discussions in various sessions. The title of the first session is JCCI and JICA's Cluster Strategy. JICA has set a JICA global agenda, which covers 20 areas and challenges as its business strategy. And in the sector of environmental management, they have outlined the JICA Clean City Initiative to take measures against air pollution, uh, water pollution, and uh, solid waste management uh, to aim to bring benefits to 50 countries, 500 million people by 2030. So we would like to call upon uh, Mr. Akihiro Miyazaki, Deputy Director General of the Global Environment Bureau of JICA to share with us the outline of this initiative and its strategy. Good morning, everyone. I am from the Global Environment Bureau of JICA. My name is Miyazaki. And today I would like to talk about JICA's global agenda that JICA is promoting and the contents of the JCCI. Now, I'll be uh, making an introductory speech in a sense. And after my speech, uh, I think uh, you'll be able to deepen understanding about the presentations to follow after this introductory speech. So first of all, I'd like to discuss the JICA Global Agenda promoted by JICA. Last year, JICA developed the JICA Global Agenda, 20 targets to address the world's development challenges as its business strategy. And when you look at this chart, you can see that uh, our projects themselves must be able to address uh, global issues and it must be oriented toward the resolution of social issues. So what's necessary for this? Not only JICA, but also uh, the partner countries and donors and international organizations. Uh, we must work with all these stakeholders to achieve these goals. Now, JICA does not provide just technological uh, cooperation. We must also provide funding, uh, volunteer activities, and we must mobilize all of JICA's uh, partners and related stakeholders uh, so that we can together move toward uh, the goals. And that's why we set these 20 targets. Now then, what's necessary to achieve these 20 targets, we need to promote further dialogue, even more than in the past. We must also create a platform. That is, we must communicate and disseminate information through the platform and mobilize and attract partners and like-minded individuals. We must also enhance accountability, uh, visualize impact, because unless you see outcomes, visual uh, outcomes, it's very difficult to move forward. So it's necessary to visualize the impact and outcomes so that we can together uh, tread this path. And in order to further the global agenda, I believe that four segments are extremely important. One is agenda setting. That is how to set the goals for constructive progress and developing the strategy to achieve this. 
Also, platform building is also important to have a common platform to be shared by everyone to share knowledge and to create common knowledge. And the next is fund mobilization. You must mobilize funds. You need finance. Uh, otherwise, it'll be difficult to promote cooperation. Most recently, not only uh, ODA is not enough uh, to tackle these issues, and uh, we need to mobilize private uh, sector funds as well to work together. And so we must, at the same time, create a market creation and build a conducive environment, business environment, uh, to resolve these issues. Also, under the JCCI, the JICA Clean City Initiative is used to set the agenda. And at a JCCI seminar like this, we share uh, and uh, disseminate information. Also, oh, we uh, value partnerships. I believe that uh, there'll be dialogue with uh, various people from international agencies and stakeholders. And in the afternoon session as well, I think that there'll be presentations from the business sector and we would like to collaborate with the business sector as well in order to promote the global agenda. Now then, what sort of issues are we facing in environmental management today? I'll be very brief. The first is in the area of waste. Uh, I think uh, there was mention of this before, and you have probably heard in the media and news recently, but marine plastics are a very serious problem. It is indeed a grave problem. It's not only a regional problem, but it's a global issue. And how to tackle the issue of marine plastics is a, a key issue. About 8 million tons of plastics or marine plastics are discharged into the ocean every year. And it's estimated that by 2050, uh, the uh, total weight of plastics in the ocean will exceed the total weight of fish in the ocean. So in that sense, it's a race against the clock. We must take uh, rapid measures, especially in terms of uh, marine plastics. It's estimated that about 80% of such plastic litter flows into the ocean from land-based sources. So we must stop the, uh, also we must make the uh, waste more sanitary on the land and make sure that it doesn't flow into the ocean. Also methane at the uh, final disposal sites is another issue because uh, methane has uh, several tens of times more potency than CO2. Also water quality is another issue. In water quality in Japan, several tens of years ago, we suffered from both domestic as well as industrial effluent, which caused a very bad water pollution in the past. But now we can enjoy very clean water in the developing countries or many developing countries, uh, they uh, still face many issues relating to water quality. So we, it's necessary to tackle uh, that uh, water pollution issue as well. And at the same time, uh, access to sanitation is another key issue. In uh, Japan, if you go to a toilet, uh, there's a very clean, beautiful toilet. But in developing countries, there are many people who lack access uh, to modern sanitation about 3.8 billion uh, million people still lack access. So that's a big uh, sector, 3.6 billion. And uh, of course, air pollution is another issue. In Japan, living in Japan today, you don't feel the air pollution so much, but when you look at the world, the more than 90% of people live in air quality below the PM 2.5 standards. And as written here, and there are about, uh, 7 million people who die uh, from respiratory diseases and other diseases which are caused by air pollution. So how can we tackle these issues? Now, as I said earlier, in the global agenda, we have set two strategies or so clusters under the Clean City Initiative uh, to promote our project. The first is to improve waste disposal structures to improve a waste management in order to achieve a recycle oriented society that's the first cluster and the other is to create a healthy water air and soil environment through environmental regulations and pollution control measures that's the second cluster and against these two clusters we envision the development of a 
three stages uh, to adopt uh, strategies that ma meet and match the conditions of the developing countries and cities. Today, I'd like to explain the cluster involving the waste sector in detail today. Now, when we talk about waste, uh, as was mentioned in the address earlier, there was a time when Japan suffered uh, from waste management, but now we can live in very clean and litter-free uh, streets or cities, but in many developing countries, the, the streets are littered, the sanitation is very poor in many uh, cities. Now, we have provided three stages, and the first stage is to improve public hygiene by collecting litter from the streets and improving uh, sanitation and public hygiene. That's the focus of the first stage. And uh, in this stage, we must uh, create plans, but even before creating plans, we must, first of all, understand the status quo and the uh, final disposal sites uh, tend to be open dumping in many instances, which are uncontrolled. Uh, so uh, they, such open dumps must be improved. And waste in general will change in nature according to uh, or along with economic development. That's been the case in Japan. And I think uh, that's also be seen in developing countries from our analysis. So with urbanization, there will be a sharp rise in the volume of waste. And so the second stage would be to grapple with that increase in waste volume. Along with economic growth, the amount of waste will increase very sharply. And to address this, what sort of policies are necessary? And the waste will also become more diversified. Uh, because as the economy grows, uh, people will like to live more convenient lives. And so not only the kitchen waste, but also plastics and other uh, litter uh, will increase along with uh, urbanization and industrialization. And so how to reduce the environment the footprint or burden, uh, that is uh, to switch uh, from open dumping uh, to uh, sanitation uh, or sanitary uh, refills in the final disposal sites, and also uh, to alleviate the situation, the three R's must be promoted, and also the segregation and sorting of waste uh, must be promoted in the second stage. And the third stage, this is our final objective or destination, but uh, uh, this is the stage in which the economy will develop even further. And against that backdrop, of course, there will be an increase in the amount of waste. And as the waste increases, you must think about how to reduce the uh, weight of waste and also uh, to prevent waste from being generated in the first place. So that's the focus of the third stage. So when it comes this far, we can't really uh, address uh, things in the realm of just waste management. And that is, you have to look at the recycling industry and the community as a whole to address this stage. And so not only the waste related uh, sector, but also the community as a whole must uh, transform itself and plan for transformation into uh, a recycling uh, society or circular economy. And uh, so those are the objectives with, with which we would like to promote waste management policies in the future. And as we think about these three stages, we believe that the Japan's experience uh, will uh, be very beneficial and useful. And this is uh, some data from Tokyo. And as you can see from this graph, the red the line shows the population growth and the blue shows the amount of solid waste uh, or municipal solid waste. And you can see that there was a period uh, where there was a war and so there was a sudden drop in solid waste. But in the 1950s and 60s, with the rapid uh, increase in the population, the amount of solid waste also rose very sharply. And of course, that uh, increased the environmental burden or footprint and caused a lot of confusion and disruption in uh, Tokyo society. But after that, as you can see from the year 2000 onwards, despite the increase in the population, the amount of solid waste is decreasing, which we believe is uh, the necessary step to achieve a sound material cycle society. So we have made very good progress. This graph is a little difficult to see. So let me show a few pictures for you. Well, first of all, in 1950s and 60s, still yet, 
the new state-of-the-art equipment was not available. So partly it was manual intensive work in order to collect and dispose garbages and waste. But of course, with the increase of population and urbanization, we have seen a surge in the volume of garbage. So in the final processing uh, site, there is a lot of burden. On the laptop, as you can see, this is a Koto ward, Koto city. The people in adjacent areas are trying to protest not to have garbage delivered to uh, this uh, quota war. And this is called a garbage war in 1971. So in terms of Japan going through these experiences, how are we going to reduce the amount of garbage that could, would be collected to the final uh, disposal location, utilizing incinerator, uh, have, having an intermediary uh, location to process garbages? And due to that, uh, in the interest and awareness of the citizens and people of the city are very much aware about waste and they uh, are reducing the volume of waste. So collecting waste and at the same time uh, being aware of reducing waste. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the if the final disposal location uh, is going to be full, they are going to be converted into green parks and place where people can relax. So we have gone through this experience. So how will we be able to share on this experience and enhance understanding by the developing countries is going to be our main mission. And also for us in the developing countries, we have gone through various experiences. The blue dot is where JICA has our office and a presence, many locations, 96 locations altogether. And Around that, there are red circles, and this represent the so far the waste of the project uh, has been implemented in those locations. So as you can see, uh, many experiences, of course, everything has not succeeded. We have gone through failure as well, and how we be able to pursue uh, our journey for recycle-based uh, community and society, uh, we have uh, are trying to achieve that through dialogue with the community and the society. Yeah. And recently on the left-hand side, left bottom, in Africa, as have been already mentioned already, uh, Africa Clean City Platform, ACCP, has taken its momentum. And we also are helping in order to pursue this ACCP uh, program. And what ex success and experience are we able to go through them? I would like to give you some case examples. So first of all, in Malaysia, uh, well, Malaysia in 1980s, 90s, uh, they have gone through a tremendous uh, economic growth. And alongside with that, the volume of waste have surged as well. So the government alone will not be able to cope with the volume of waste on the right top. As you can see, it's open dumping and the volume of waste have increased. And collection could not even catch up with the volume of the waste. The Malaysian government, uh, with the support, uh, we have been asked to support the Malaysian government. And 1980, uh, towards the end of 1980, JICA also have decided to collaborate uh, on this initiative. And what we have started is reducing the amount of waste. We have put the plans together. So as you can see on the pictures here, how we will be able to reduce the amount of waste, compost, and first of all, reduce the total amount of waste. At the same time from the 90s, we stopped open dumping and we have a Fukuoka method. Uh, it is a, uh, uh, Professor Masi also have helped us on that, but how hygienically uh, we will be able to uh, create a sanitary landfill. So the guideline for design and operation has been established. As of now, it's a very clean and very much improved urban city building. So sanitary landfill in the past. It's only one location. And now there are 21 locations altogether. And the collection rate and yield, as we have started, it was still low, about 50% or so when we started this initiative. Now, now it's close to 90%. And recycle ratio in the past was close to being zero. And now 30% recycling rates. So it's a wonderful experience that we have gone through uh, with our collaborative effort uh, with the people of Malaysia that we had 
pursued our journey uh, on this effort. And this is, again, the three stages that I talked about. When you align with these three, three stages, the first stage is the government of Malaysian uh, government have also extended support. And partly, JICA was involved as well, putting plans together. We also have helped in that effort. And the second stage, uh, in terms of Fukuoka uh, method, it's so-called sanit sanitized or uh, sanitary landfill. This is a great achievement and landmark for Malaysia. And at the same time, Malaysia now in the third stage, the government have all worked as one in creating a recycling uh, economy and a deep and big step forward. And in terms of the so-called e-waste, electric electronical waste what kind of measures are needed how are we going to go with that not only the ministry of environment but involving the private sector they are now trying to pursue forward on this journey to establish a uh, waste reduction uh, methodology so now i have another example this is in dhaka in bangladesh in dhaka well, our involvement started from about 2,000 dispatching experts to Dhaka. So looking at the picture, it's obvious that in the city of the center, you see piles and heaps of waste. And for the uh, final sort of a processing amount, it was just uh, without sorting, uh, it was the, it was piled up. So reach it uh, in terms of the infiltration of the ground was uh, immense and have negative impact on the environment. So the Bangladesh government and the people and the society and environment and also the cleaners with their tremendous amount of effort. It's now, it's a wonderful uh, involvement. 44% uh, only collection rate was very low, only 44%. But now it's close to 90% in terms of the waste collection rate. So therefore, Dhaka, as of now, if you go into Dhaka, it's a very clean city, which we'll be able to enjoy. And this, how has it been achieved? Uh, I would like to just introduce this slightly in detail. Well, again, in terms of collection and transporting the waste, how can you do that effectively, efficiently? Especially the word-based, word-based approach. It's a community, society, how the word itself would participate. Small community is going to collect the waste and it's an integration or the uh, unification uh, of the society so that we'll be able to fix effectively and optimally we'll be able to collect the waste. So the cleaning activities, those cleaners uh, were in a way, it's been deemed to be lower in the hierarch hierarchical social tier, but with the help of the government, with the people, the cleaners is a must have uh, talent and had to be admired in terms of their job. And this was the changing the mindset and with ward based approach there was a tremendous amount of improvement and on top of that uh, equipment has been also been deployed large equipment uh, you be able to bring the waste to the final processing location so again three stages aligned with this three stage in dhaka the first stage second stage the collaboration was quite extensive and large. Uh, Dhaka, the situation of waste uh, was very hard to grasp. And we started off with that uh, situation by putting the plan together and having classifying the waste and running the campaign. The people and the mindset awareness of the people have tremendously changed. And for the first stage, that was a, a big uh, achievement and deliverables. And going into the second stage, the in terms of the improvement of the uh, last uh, per processing uh, site and data management. Uh, unless we have a good grasp of data, we're not going to be able to improve uh, further down the road. So with the collaboration in terms of medical waste in Dhaka, uh, we have also supported and there's again a tremendous amount of improvement in this area as well. So, so far, uh, there are some examples that I have highlighted but probably as you may know the equipment technology alone will not be able to solve this uh, waste management issue so the local 
culture, people, society, economy, those should be well embraced and harnessed. And that is going to be the basis of our collaboration. In order to do so, what's necessary? Of course, we need finance. Otherwise, we won't be able to make progress. Organization needs to change. And also legal framework also needs to be improved. And otherwise, it's very difficult to make progress as well. And the most important thing is the social participation. So people will need to understand and also try to reduce the and have a better management of waste. And by tier by tier, technology needs to be effectively transferred. And that is under the Clean City Initiative JICA. This is the most important thing under JCCI. So each of the roles, the capacity needs to be leveraged and improved. So that is going to be our future recycle-based society leading to clean urban cities. So this is going to be my last slide. So, JCCI, what can we do as part of our contribution? This is a brief summary. So, JCCI, through this uh, program, uh, the sustainable growth of the developing countries and also human security. We like to con contribute to the human security. And since uh, earlier we have been talking about a contribution to SDGs is also another important area in waste goal 11 and 12 there is going to be a tremendous impact in managing the waste and when looking on the right hand side it's obvious that marine plastic pollution and climate change and also that will lead to the preservation of biodiversity so many of the SDGs goal we will be able to contribute through this activity overall. So these activities and these initiatives, by pursuing them at the very end in 2030, by 2030, 50 countries, 500 million people, uh, we will also be wanting to offer beneficial and benefit to them. And that's something that I, and we would like to do with your effort. So thank you very much for your kind attention. This will conclude my presentation. Mr. Miyazaki, thank you very much. So we'd like to offer a break.